Hey guys, this is Tristan with Victorious Games. There was a question on the GDevelop Discord about how you could split an object in half. For instance, if a laser were to slice it right down the middle, uh, how would you do that and animate it? And I came up with a simple way to do that uh, I thought I'd share with you today. It looks like this. I just chop it in half, like that, and I fade away and then it recreates in a loop. So let's see how I did this. I'm going to actually start a new scene so you can see how it's done. This is just a blank uh, canvas. Let's create a new sprite. We'll call it a uh, full object. This will be the one that gets cut. Um, I'm just going to use this face and so if you had a sprite like this um, and you wanted to create halves, um, you can edit it. Well, let's first let's start by duplicating it. We'll make a left side and then let's duplicate it and make a right side, right half. Uh, then we could edit these in, in uh, Piscal. You can double click on them, edit with Piscal, and let's start with the, which one am I doing? This is the right half. Okay, let's do the right half. So if you use this rectangular selection tool, I'll just zoom out. You could just start anywhere here, click and drag. I'm going to delete, I need to delete the left side. So I'm going to delete the left side, and I want to bring it to like right in the middle of this, his eyes. He's basically has two pixels of solid purple, so I'm gonna delete up half of those. And like this, I've selected half of the screen, I just hit delete, and it deleted the left side of his face. So now we have this, but the canvas is still large, like this is still part of the sprite, this empty space. So easiest way to do that is to, is to click align image to center, and crop the sprite that gets rid of all the edges so just hit save apply so you can see the right half is looking good let's do the same thing for the left half we will edit it and i'm going to select the right side with the rectangular tool or sorry the rectangular selection tool and we're going to delete the right side Select and then hit the delete button. Now let's hit uh, crop the sprite. Okay. And save. Apply. There you go. We have a left half, we have a right half, and we have the full object. And they look, you know, they look just like they should. Those are the two pieces, and this is the single piece. So the next thing I want to do is when these get cut, I want them to fall down. And the easiest way to do that is to add the physics behavior. So if you double click on this object, behaviors, add behavior to object, physics engine 2.0. Okay, so these now these two objects have physics behavior. This one does not. If we hit a play, you'll see the ones that have the physics behavior fall and this one doesn't. Um, these, there's no floor for these to hit yet, so I want to add a uh, floor. So I'll just pick one from the asset store. This is a tiled sprite. A tiled sprite means you can uh, pretty much set this, this size and shape at will and it'll duplicate it as needed. Um, I'll just make a little extra uh, bigger than the screen. Uh, oh, so if, if we play, it'll still fall through this. The only way to stop it from falling through that is to change the tiled sprite to have physics behavior. Otherwise, they don't know about each other. So we're going to add the physics engine. And for this one, we can just do uh, type dynamic. We're going to say type static. That means that it will not move, it will not be affected by gravity or anything actually. It just it can't be moved unless you t give it a, 
uh, a force to move it. It won't be affected by objects hitting it, for instance. Let's make an event. So we're going to make it so that if I press a key, and we want to make sure it's a trigger once, so that when you push down on the key, it only triggers once. Even Sometimes if you push down on a key, even if you think you're fast, it may be down for several frames, and we don't want this to happen multiple times. We want it to happen once. We're going to actually create these. The left half is going to be where the full object is. And the... I'm going to control... If you do control, click, drag, that copies it. And I'm going to change that to the right half. So the right half, we need this to be actually a little bit bigger, uh, the exposition, because it's going to be on the right side. We don't want it to be exactly where the left side is. We want to start where the left half um, ends. So we're going to start the exposition where, starting at the full object, and then just add the uh, the width of the left half. And let's see if this looks right. Oh, there you go. See, so this is the full object here, and when I hit, <laughs> now they're, they're stacking, I better start over. <laughs> I love when you get unintended effects, it, it cracks me up. Let's start over, and I'll maybe, ex let's, uh, let's delete this, these halves. So here we have a single object, f a full object. When I hit space, it's gonna create those two halves, and then they fall down. Um, the primary object still there, so we should probably delete that. Uh, let's say full object delete. Now let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna hit a button. So you saw the full object disappeared and in its place were these two halves. And they fall to the ground like this. And you could tell they're split, and so that looks good. But now I also want them to kind of fall apart from each other. So let's add a force. Uh, the left half, I want it to be, so it has to be a physics force because these are physics objects. Let's do angular velocity, that's rotation. And let's add 500 units to the left half and to the right half. And one's going to subtract and one's going to uh, add. I actually don't know if this is right, meaning well, <laughs> the rotation is, if I add them, they're going to rotate clockwise. Uh, that's how you, because that's how the angles work is clockwise is when you add. And if you subtract, you're going to go backwards. So let's see. The left half adding would, that's actually going to make it run into each other. Uh, let's see if this looks good or bad. Uh, it looks bad. So yeah, see, I, I'm having them run into each other. Let's make the left hand subtract and the right hand add. So now subtracting, the, the left half will go away, like counterclockwise, and the right half will add, will go clockwise. So let's try this. There you go, that's what I, that's what I was hoping it would do. And um, if I keep pressing it, you'll see it's being created up here at the top left. The top left of the screen is zero, zero, and I'm having it create the object at based off this full object um, values. Well, we've deleted the full object, so it, G develops like I have no idea what this is, so I'm just going to put zeros in. So G develop reads this as uh, create the left half at zero zero and the right half zero zero. And that's why they're um, up here. We could make the body parts fade away by reducing their opacity. Um, let's oh let let's show you how to do object groups because I have a left half and a right half. I'd have to write code for both of these, like fade opacity left half, fade opacity right half. And it'd be useful for you guys to know how to do 
object groups. So to query an object group, you go here and click Add Group, and click on the group. And the group is empty. Let's choose an object to add. Let's add the left half and the right half. And let's rename this group to Body Parts. So now I've got a group that has two, the two pieces in it. And that helps us reduce the amount of code we have to write. So let's um, add an action and see how these are the sprite objects up here. Now there's this brand new thing called object groups, body parts. And this is where we're going to change the opacity. And we're going to subtract it by, let's start with 10. That's uh, Opacity is a value between 0 and 255. 0 is an invisible object and 255 is the normal default opacity. It's basically you can't see through it. We're going to be reducing it by 10. So it's starting at 255 and it's going to go down by 10 every frame. And I have no conditions here so it'll happen um, as soon as they are created they will start fading away. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's pretty fast. That's too fast because you don't get to see them fall. So let's subtract 1 instead. Okay, there they go. They're fading away. And uh, because we use that, the group, object group body parts, we only need to write one line of code. So that's helpful in a lot of ways, especially if you had a lot of different objects in this group. Let's uh, make them delete when they are, uh, when the opacity gets to zero. So we're going to write a condition body parts opacity equals zero. So when they become invisible, we don't need them anymore. Let's just delete them. Let's see if this works. Okay, they're going to fade. And we actually can't see if they're deleted because they're invisible. The best way to see if they're deleted is to run the debugger. Uh, which is this little bug button, and you say start the debugger. And since I already have a preview going, I'm just going to select the one that's going, and click refresh. So instances is how many objects are currently running, and there's zero of everything, so that matches what we expected. Um, oh, let's see, if I can hit space, before it fades away, we should be able to see the objects. So I'm going to hit space, refresh. See there's a left half and a right half. And they faded away by now, so let me hit re refresh. And you can see they're gone. So the debugger is a very useful tool to see how many objects you have and uh, what the states are. Oh, look, see, we, have, we still have our floor. Our floor has not been deleted. That's what we want. OK, let's have the. Um, original uh, object come back. Um, we want to create this object when um, the body parts have been deleted. So the easiest way to do that is to do a count. So if you click on the body parts group and it's a count or number there we go, number of objects. And if it equals zero, if the number of body parts objects equals zero, then create a um, object here. This is very important to have a trigger once. Anytime you have a create, you pretty much want to make sure there's a trigger once. Otherwise, you're going to be creating dozens, if not hundreds, of objects. All right. Let's see what this looks like. I'm going to close that preview. Uh, we have two. Oh, I know why we have two. Because we still have this guy. Let's delete him. Okay, there's no body parts, so that's why I got created. Now we have two body parts, and they're about to get deleted. They're deleted. Now we have one, the full object again. And so this is kind of a loop that uh, is going through here. 
Okay, well, that's all I want to talk about today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and found it useful. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.